before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Sometimes a battle is just one blip in the war, and other times it can shift the course of history. From the Battle of Cajamarca to the Siege of Stalingrad, here are some of the most epic and significant battles in history. Number 1. Battle of Cajamarca On November 16, 1532, the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro ambushed the Incan ruler of Atahualpa in Cajamarca, in what is now Peru. The slaughter of thousands of unarmed Incan nobility sparked a long struggle between the Spanish and the Incas. After months of diplomacy and espionage, Pizarro invited the Incan ruler to come to the Great Square of Cajamarca. Atahualpa agreed and brought 80,000 people with an, with an unarmed inner retinue to show goodwill. Meanwhile, Pizarro's men hid in the city. A friar from the Spanish side offered the leader a Bible, which Atahualpa, which Atahualpa did not know how to open, and asked the king to accept Christianity. The king refused. The Spanish barraged the unarmed content, contingent with gunfire, and Atahualpa was captured and eventually executed. Number 2. The Battle of Hastings On October 14, 1066, the Norman invader William the Conqueror defeated King Harold II on Sinlac Hill near Hastings, England. William the Conqueror held the former king, Edward the Confessor, had promised him the English throne in 1051, but on his deathbed, Edward changed his mind and tapped nobleman Harold Godwinson instead. William marshaled forces to dispute Harold's claim, defeated the newly minted king, and then went on to London, which surrendered to the Norman invader. King William I was crowned on Christmas Day in 1066. The battle marked the end of Anglo-Saxon rule of England. Number 3. The Siege of Orleans The French won the Siege of Orleans, in, of Orleans France in May 1429, largely because of Joan of Arc, a teenage peasant whose visions of God led her to fight in the Hundred Years' War. The English seemed to be winning their nearly six-month siege of the city, but when St. Joan appeared in the city, rallying the, the citizenry, suggesting tactical de decisions, and participating in battle, the French retook the banks of the Loire River and defeated the invaders. The wind boosted the morale of the, of the dispirited French, who had been badly beaten at, at Agincourt, France, by Henry IV. Many say the battle saved France from centuries of English rule. Number 4. The Battle of Tours in AD 732, an invading Muslim army led by Spain's Moorish general, Abd er Rahman, Badr Rahman, crossed the Western Pyrenees and reached Tours, France, hoping to extend into Europe. But Charles the Hammer Martel led a allegedly un unarmored Frankish army that held its ground against the mounted and mailed horsemen of the invaders. Eventually, French horses captured and killed the Moors' leader and forced the invading army into retreat. Many scholars argue that if Bada Roman had prevailed, Islam would have become the dominant religion of Europe. Number 5. Surrender at Yorktown On October 19, 1781, the British forces led by General Cornwallis were handily defeated at Yorktown, Virginia. After being flanked by the French naval fleet at sea and American forces on land, over the course of the Revolutionary War, the scrappy colonists had become a fairly efficient fighting machine under General George Washington. The rather boring battle led the British to surrender and retreat from the American colonies, paving the way for the United States of America to be born. Number 6. Battle of Waterloo On June 18, 1815, British and Prussian forces led by the Duke of Wellington squashed Napoleon Bonaparte's troops at Waterloo in what is now Belgium. The battle was the final defeat of Napoleon, who had expanded across Europe starting in 1799 abdicated power after a disastrous Russian campaign in 1814, and briefly returned to power at Waterloo. Afterwards, he abdicated once again. Napoleon died in exile on the island of St. Helena off the West African coast in 1821. Number 7. The Battle of Gettysburg Union forces led by General George Meade prevailed against the rebels led by, Rob led by Robert E. Lee at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on July 3, 1863, after three days of fighting. Confederate forces had just won a victory at Chancellorsville, Virginia, and were hoping to press further north when the two armies met. Though Confederates won the first day of battle, by day three the rebels were in retreat, with nearly 100,000 men dead in total. The battle quashed Confederate hopes of reaching Harrisburg or Philadelphia. Historians later said the battle, along with the South's defeat at Vicksburg, Miss Vicksburg, Missouri, Vicksburg, Missouri on July 4th, were the turning points in the Civil War. Number 8. The Siege of Stalingrad The nearly six-month Siege of Stalingrad was one of the most pivotal and dramatic events in World War II. In August 1942, Adolf Hitler bombarded the industrial city, now known as Volgograd, with air assaults and then poured infantry into the attack. The strapped Russian army enlisted volunteer citizens, some with no weapons, to fight against the invaders. 
After about three months, the Germans reached the shores of the Volga River, but the Russians mounted a counteroffensive that trapped the German army in the city. Close combat and deadly skirmishes over tiny pieces of territory raged on for months, as starving citizens and troops struggled to survive the brutal struggled to survive the brutal Russian war. The brutal Russian winter. The Germans the Germans slowly bled troops, and by February 1943, they were out of food and ammunition and surrendered. Nearly two million people died in the siege. After Stalingrad, the Germans no longer advanced on the eastern front of the war. Number nine, invasion of Normandy. While Stalingrad may have been a, de a decisive battle for the Eastern Front, the invasion of Normandy by Allied forces on D-Day 1944 marked the beginning of the Nazis' decline on the Western Front. Canadian, French, American, and British forces launched, an launched a waterborne assault on June 6, 1944, using air and sea bombardments along with parachute troops. By July, more than a million men had landed on the French coast, eventually retaking much of France and forcing the Germans to reopen a settled front. This brings us to the end of our video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.